We're going to start with the big release. And I'm going to start on this because we're going to be talking about M. Night Shyamalan. This is Trap. All right, let's talk Trap. So M. Night Shyamalan, I had a movie of his in uh, as a four-star movie in my top 10. Now, was that last year? I think it was just last year, wasn't it? Knock at the Cabin? Knock at the Cabin. Or is that, or is that 2022? That was last year. Yeah. Yeah, it was I'm last sure. year. It was last, last year. year. It was okay. past X year, right? Yeah. So, uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Because uh, Jason Momoa beat out Dave Bautista for the nomination at the Pinos. Anyway, so Trap Odyssey. is a new M. Night Shyamalan starring Josh Hartnett. The, the Hartnett is, uh, is happening. Uh, he plays Cooper, uh, a loving father who takes his daughter to a concert for Lady Raven, the big pop sensation played by M. Night Shyamalan's daughter, Salika Shyamalan. And then he, they find out through um, what you see in the trailer that uh, the entire concert is really just a trap to trap the butcher, a serial killer who's been going around killing people. They found out he was going to be there and they've set up a trap to try and uh, and catch him at this concert. And everyone that works there is in on it. And how is he going to get out? There's also uh, Allison Pill plays, uh, who has I feel like hasn't been in anything in forever, plays Josh Hartman's wife. Speaking of not being in anything in forever, Haley Mills plays a... Uh, Miss Bliss. Shout Miss out. Bliss. Haley Mills plays a... Uh, uh, a psychological profiler who is running the uh, the sting operation at the concert. Okay. So this movie is kind of a mess. It has it has some moments that are actually really, really good. Like there are some really cool things, especially in the first like half as Josh Hartnett is just kind of wandering this arena, trying to figure out what he can do, what he can't do, where he can es possibly escape, where he can't. That plays really cool. Shyamalan's problem in this movie is he didn't know when to stop. Um, and he didn't know, like, he won't, he's always wanted to be Hitchcock, right? He's always wanted to have that persona of, I'm the next Hitchcock. Well, one thing Hitchcock knew how to do is when he makes these simple stories, like this is a nice, simple story. Serial killer trapped at a concert. They're all after him. Go. And Hitchcock knew how to keep it contained and keep it tight and keep it simple. And that's what made his, his movie so great. Well, Shyamalan, just like, like the first half of this is great. But it's like, how, how are you going to end it? Oh, you're going to end it with another hour of movie. It, it, it falls apart just because he... He doesn't know when to stop, and he doesn't know when to when to call it quits. Um, the the end is insane, ridiculous, and even in that, there are moments that are actually really good, but for the most part, it's just a mess. The the like once you hit what you could call the third act, and and things progress, um, and he's truly on the run, it's laughably bad. Um. But there's enough in there that's that's good. I I don't know. I'm giving it two stars. It it's it's got some good stuff, but like I said, this is a case where Shyamalan just didn't know when to stop. He didn't know when to when to say when, when to keep his story simple. And because of that, it just falls off the rails. And honestly, I kind of think this may have been all just a ploy to try and get his daughter to be a pop star. So uh, there's that side of it as well. Two stars. That's what I'm giving it. Uh, we're going to go to... Uh, let's go to Zach. Next. Okay, so... Uh, yeah. Um, I support M. Night Shyamalan. I remember, you know, being a teenager and absolutely... I was, I was at the first showing of Signs. I was at the first showing of The Village. I, I really have, have been a passionate... M. Night Stan. I don't know if that's a thing. But um, I am also aware that he has some weaknesses. You're an M. Night Shama fan. There we go. If that's the, the Hartnettissance and the Shama fan. 
Wow, I, I just going off the rails quickly. Okay, so here's the thing thing about Shyamalan is, um, you know, kind of a little bit like what we talked about with Tarantino the last few weeks. Okay, Tarantino's movies are sometimes over long. Sometimes there's too much dialogue. Sometimes it's you know shit just gets crazy. Shyamalan, you kind of have to accept a couple things. One is that he's not good at dialogue. George Lucas isn't good at dialogue either. And another th- and nor is Clint Eastwood. And another thing about Shyamalan, whether you like him or not, is he's like an ideas person. He isn't necessarily an execution person. You don't look to him for like details. You're not going to ask. He doesn't have good answers to practical questions like how did they actually wrangle this, uh, the butcher to actually go to this concert? How did they uh, discern that uh, he was the serial killer? How was this plan ever going to work? Why would you cast an 85-year-old Haley Mills as the chief uh, profiler and investigator? Even if I had suggested that in a recasting of this movie, Todd would have mercilessly made fun of me for that casting. So I'm not sure what, what Haley Mills is doing in this movie. She makes a solid Matt Damon candidate, though. What movie are you in? Interestingly enough, so, solid side digression for a second. I just got done reading Haley Mills' um, autobiography, Forever Young. I didn't even realize she was in the movie so it's kind of perfect co- coincidence it's a really interesting autobiography where she really trashes walt disney and sort of the the bullshit she, that she had to put up with i really like Haley mills growing up i think pollyanna is an underrated movie anyway uh this movie i'm on board with all, almost to to the t with what terry is saying i actually like the first hour of this movie now i like it for reasons that have i guess not that much to do with Shyamalan. what i like about it is this is a concert movie I think he does a really good job of establishing what the what it must be like at not a Lady Raven concert, but a Taylor Swift or Olivia Rodrigo concert. Um, I think Josh Hartnett's daughter is really good in this movie. Like she, I think, portrays the enthusiasm and joy and excitement that any 13 year old girl would have at a concert like this. Um, the whole movie could have really been one of two things. Number one would have been, let's just keep the whole story at the concert. Let's make this an 85 or 90 minute movie, maybe like Red Eye or maybe like, um, you know, like a smaller movie like Snake Eyes or something like that. You don't need to go outside the world. So just like what Terry was saying, or just give me a movie about a, a father daughter at a concert. I I was kind of on board for that. I didn't even care about the, the killer stuff. I thought it was kind of interesting how like, she's like, dad, you're acting weird. And you know, but Terry's right. Once it leaves the venue, uh, this movie collapses um, ex- excessively. Um, it's absolutely ridiculous, uh, which is sad because I was rooting for this movie. Even even when he gets in the limo, I remember thinking, "I'm giving it. I'm I'm at a three stars at this point." I mean, it's it's inconceivable. It's ridiculous. The dialogue's terrible. You get uh, the Lil Ral Howery type character who explains everything to him, which is a ridiculous plot contrivance. Um, but in the end, it's, uh, it's still kind of interesting. But once they leave that venue, and Terry's right, uh, someone needed to tell Shyamalan, listen, M, this is not uh, how you write movies. Just end the movie with a clever way of this guy to actually get through this kind of ridiculous trap. And even though it's ridiculous, you still kind of like it. So I guess what I would say is um, this movie is not exactly Dexter. Okay, We don't exactly understand why this guy gets such a kick out of killing people. You've never even exactly- seen Dexter. I've seen a few episodes of Dexter. You assigned it to me. I'm Terry, aware of the show Dexter. Assigned you a few episodes. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm going to do what, what I'm going to hear, heretofore call the kinds of kindness uh, sort of methodology in, in reviewing a movie. First half of this movie, three stars. Second half of this movie, one star. I'm going two stars, which I think is pretty generous because it ends pretty badly. But if you pause the movie at the 60-minute mark or whenever it is that he leaves the stadium, it's not a bad movie. But uh, yikes, it gets uh, uh, appallingly bad uh, by the end of it. So, I, yeah, pretty much everything Terry said, I, I uh, confirm. But see, here's the thing. The, so, some of what you mentioned in there, it, it's, it has to all be because his daughter is Lady Raven. I mean, okay, it's <laughs> yeah, it, it's 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 so, in it, other words, the first half a concert movie that shows so much music. Because she wants to highlight Lady Raven. Why Why does is there a second half of this movie that leaves the venue? So he can show that she can act. I mean, it, it's it, that's the only reason it makes any sense why this movie goes beyond that. Well, the problem is M. Night Shyamalan, uh, when he gets too big, it's a problem. This movie is big in two very bad ways. One of which is, uh, why is this concert happening to capture this killer? ridiculous okay and then two why is this movie made to promote his daughter 
I, I don't know. I think he needs to scale back down on everything in life and uh, just make a movie about people with schizophrenia. That that's or or uh, multiple personalities. That James McAvoy, I think. Well, and that's the other thing. I thought this movie was going to be another sequel to Glass, but I don't want to step on Todd's toes. I want to hear Todd. Well, yeah, you, you've mentioned like all the all references week. I was going for. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. I don't know. So in this movie, like as usual in in um in um M Night Shyamalan movies, the performances are awful. Like, except for, I agree with Zach, the main girl is unprofessional enough to be interesting. But other than that, they're all terrible. Like, Haley Mills is the Tilda Swinton role. I really don't know why it wasn't Tilda Swinton. She she kind of looks like an older version of Tilda Swinton. Josh Hartnett is or, all or wrong for that role. just go like Tony Collette and, go, and go, go back to Sixth Sense people or something. He could, could do that. But, I mean, I keep seeing the James McAvoy trailer. So that that was the play here for sure. The, that should have been the main character. And I also wrote down, of course, and there need to be a little Royal Howery character, even though it's not played by him. It probably would be if this was a good movie, but it's not. But and and there's an extended M Night Shyamalan mo- or role, which I don't really understand the whole point of that. So he like sees another Indian American person in the crowd and he assumes that they're related. I don't. I really didn't get wh- where that was. I think going. it was just a, he could tell that he was a staffer and it just happened to be a relative. It, it, that was incredibly inconvenient. Um, yeah. Yes, yeah, so the nepotism here is is horrible. Like so Salika Shyamalan is is awful in this. Her acting is very very bad, especially when she needs to like add dramatic weight to herself. And her music is like remarkably average too. Like I I I wasn't it wasn't even like catchy music. It was just really dumb. And the first half of the movie is just a concert movie where everyone's worshiping her. Yeah, I mean it's just, it's just pure Shyamalan doing his thing, and people eat it up for some reason. There's no story here. Like. It, like I wrote, it was, a, it was a failed Dexter script, which is to say there's only 42 minutes of material here. And it, it, it's yet another like unwinnable situation. I can see it now. Dexter, the butcher, of course, the butcher. Um, he has to go out and have to outsmart everybody and show just how diabolical and cold-blooded of a genius he is. I could see it. It would have been, it would have been an episode of Dexter, not an not a hour and 45-minute movie. And it's, it's just a bizarre train wreck of a movie. And it just keeps going and keeps going. Like, I mean, when he got in the limo, I, I threw my hands up and then everyone laughed because, I mean, there, there was like some reasonable amount of people at, at the theater. I don't understand why people like this. I mean, Shyamalan thinks his audience is incredibly dumb, but they they eat it up. I mean, it, I mean, it, it, it was like a, another relative hit for him. And the, but this audience that I was with was uh, they continued walking out. They had no hesitation, just walking out at the end of the movie during the mid credit scene because they had enough of the thing. I, I almost joined him. Uh, it's um, and he's trying to have this like commentary on the importance of technology and celebrity because that that's what keeps like uh, bringing you uh, closer to catching the killer. But it's too dumb to make any of that work, and it betrays its own point way too many times. Uh, he it's like he it creates this character Cooper as like Max Cady, but he's also as like unrealistically even more unrealistically genius than like the Tooth Fairy and Red Dragon. I mean, he just won't die, and he won't get caught for whatever reason. He keeps outsmarting the smartest people in the room. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, it's a one-star movie, I'm, which I guess is 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 so, somewhat generous. I, I said about a Knock at the Cabin. That was the best that Shyamalan could do, and I had it at two stars. So maybe one star for this is a little high, but um, it's, yeah, it's, it's bad. It's crap. Well, that's but, it. that's so crap. so think about think about when uh, – well, first, but before I go to that, so we, we got a shout out. Uh, Pino nominee Kid Cudi is in this movie. So let's great just, role. Let's mention that. He's um, awesome. And 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 but like I said, I think even through the crap, there are still good moments. Like um, when the the moment at the piano, like in the second half, I think that that's like a really cool moment, and and it works, but so much else around it doesn't like he had he has these little moments where he has something good um think about when Shyamalan has been good like in the last decade but like split knock at the cabin what do they have in common they're small they're claustrophobic they they they're contained right split you put a maniac in a room with a girl and that's all you got and watch it watch what happens um, knock at the cabin. You have this crazy setup of them in the uh, this cabin in the middle of nowhere, and it never leaves there. And and it's it's bigger than that, but but it never. You only know this much. Trap had the 
had a chance to be something like that if it had stayed there. I mean, it, it would have been like at knock, at knock of the Cabin, right? Knock of the Cabin, the, the survivors like drive off at the end, right? It would have been like you put 45 more minutes of movie after they drive off at the end. That's what Trap is. It's like this worked, but now I'm going to ruin it by adding to it. That's that's what happened. You you speak the truth, Terry. Truth to power. Do you think? I just don't think the first half was very good either. So, that was... <laughs> do you think M Night Shyamalan saw Gangs of New York and thought the Butcher would be a cool nickname for a killer? I don't know if he's watched Gangs of New York. It's Dexter. It was, he's yeah, the, Dexter the Bay Harbor Butcher. Yeah. Dexter oh. Okay, well, clearly I, I, I haven't, that, I haven't that, seen that, much Dexter. There you go. The two reasons this movie exists: to turn his daughter into a pop star, and to audition for the for the spinoff of Dexter coming up. That's mm. one that's of the two going. spinoffs of Dexter coming up. Two spinoffs of Dexter. <laughs> I like the daughter in it though. Other... Yeah, I just I wanted to say uh, the daughter remind she remind me of the scene in Knocked Up when Paul Rudd is talking about I wish I could be as excited for anything as my kids are excited for Bubbles. That's the way I felt about her. Like, she was so enthused to be at that concert. I'm like, why couldn't I be enthused to go to movies or do something in my life like that? Like, maybe I just need to be a 13-year-old girl. I don't know. But she she had it. She's, I, I, think, I think she was the best part of the movie. Although, her scene at the end of the movie with uh, Josh Hartnett is completely ridiculous. I, I mean, I, I, out, of, out of this world, outrageous. But she's good. I completely forgot what I was going to say to wrap this up. I don't know. Is there anything it's more? It, it sucks. Don't see it. And oh, if you now I remember it, what I was Just watch say. the first part. So you've got you've got one of M. Night Shyamalan's daughters trying to be a, a pop star, and you've got the other one that actually made a movie this year that we may need to, mm. to watch at some point. I forget what it's called, but um, she made a horror movie. Sure Todd's looking forward to that. Um, I'll, I'll try and yeah. find it. Todd, uh, when, you, when you go to Gojira concerts... Do you, what do you do during the eight intermissions that apparently happen at concerts? I mean, yeah, I know you're in the middle of the mosh pit, but you got to go out and get that oh, yeah. merch, right? I wasn't, I wasn't sure what was going on there, and then they're like, "Oh, this is the song you like." So it's a, the the concert was still going on, but why were you why were you leaving? <laughs> like that's not what you do. Very convenient. I mean, this is this is M Night Shyamalan. He doesn't really understand humans. Do you think if you right. told the people there that you had leukemia, they'd let you go on stage and rock out with Gojira? <laughs> I <laughs> get, get to go backstage and everything and get merch and, get the and a, a swag treatment. bag. <laughs> exactly. No. So, <laughs> so Ishana Knight Shyamalan uh, directed the movie the, the Watchers this year. And she also directed six episodes of a show called Servant. So, Exciting. That? Anyways, Bryce declined on Trap. It is still in theaters, so you can check it out. Uh, so that was the big movie. 